Join me right now on Kumite TV. It's UFC lightweight. Kyle Pepolek, what's going on, Kyle? How's it going, my man? Thanks for having me Thank on the you. show. No doubt, man. No doubt. Um, you're about a month out, man. Um, are you at the midpoint of your camp right now? Um, I guess usually like everyone's normally between six to eight weeks, right? But as long as like I'm always in the gym training, but now it's just stepping it up the gears, right? Just leveling up now, so sharpening the tools and get ready for that good day, you know. Your last fight, you know, you had less than a week. This time you have a full camp. You know, how are you structuring your camp this time? Um, I'm structuring it way off of, you know, also the Nordine fight. Uh, a lot of that, that fight helped me, you know, grow and evolve just by uh, being able to see what I can work on. You know, I did, you know, I feel like I did okay for, you know, a week notice. But now uh, during this camp, I know what I have to fix and work on. So I'm just going through everything that I should have done in that Nordine fight to get that W. So now I'm adding new arsenal to my full mixed martial arts game. So to become more complete and more evolved. Yeah, let's go back to that Nordine fight, you know, UFC Ottawa. You kind of rush through the process, you know, usually other guys will have like a few weeks, even a camp to get into a fight. Uh, what Was it kind of overwhelming, you know, getting pushed into the spotlight without having that time to prepare? Um... It was, that's a good way of putting it. I think it, it was a little, little like uh, more, there was more excitement than anxiousness. They were both like a good combination of both. But I think uh, the feeling of the surrealness and, you know, the excitement kind of just took over. And, you know, from there, I just had to do everything I could to, you know, enjoy that process and become the best fighter I could be in that week to give Nordine the best challenge and, you know, try to get that win. You know, so that was my goal anyway. Do you think that, you know, going through that, it will help you later on in your UFC career when you do have to take on a big fight, you know, like the one that UFC will call you like two weeks out and say, hey, man, you got to take this co-main event or main event slot. Uh, I think that it's like Nordine was a 10 plus fight UFC event and, you know, that was week notice and it's just like, you know, you got to step up or miss that opportunity. And you know what, I'd rather take that risk and, you know, create that future, you know. So uh, I did everything I could and, you know, about a time to help me grow and evolve. I think, you know, getting an experience with a vet like him help will help me in the long run for the longevity of this sport and to stay in the UFC pretty much till I want to say, no, that's my goal. Anyway. Despite, you know, losing on the scorecards, it seemed like you had a good experience in that fight. You know, did you realize anything in that matchup? What exactly did you realize and what exactly did you take away from that fight? Um, I realized in that fight I should have used more of the tools that I have in my arsenal where, you know, I faked a couple takedowns to, you know, get in close to get some shots in. I should have, you know, mixed that up and went for takedowns. And, you know, every time he kicked, I should have been rifling kicks back and I should have been, you know, throwing more of what I can do and change it up instead of him, you know, backing up. I should have, you know, a little bit better, had more feints, uh, maybe a little more discipline, which I will have now, like more on, on my arsenal now, just to see things a lot better, going, especially being with him. You took a lot of hard kicks in that fight. Did it take you a little bit of time to recover from some of the bumps and bruises? Um, the kicks on my arms, like when he was throwing those nasty head kicks, my arms were okay. They were a little bruised, but nothing too serious. The one, the last kick that was like under my uh, right knee, that bruise went from literally like the, the teardrop of my knee all the way down under to where the tendons were. And it was just like purple and yellow for probably about two and a half to three weeks. So uh, I didn't really spar or really do anything. I kind of just, you know, did a little bit of weight training, a little, a little bit of physio here and there. And, uh, you know, really light stuff just to keep the body moving and try to just flush those toxins out. For your next fight, you're back at lightweight. You know, you haven't fought in light, lightweight in a few fights. How do you feel right now? Oh, I'm feeling great. You know, like, uh, it's just another, you know, it's to me, it's just another fight and to showcase now on a worldwide stage. And, uh, you know, 155, I've been there pretty much most of my career other than the last couple. But if I had to make 55 on those last couple, I we could have, like, I'm, I'm good with that. And I, I know how to, you know, manage and, you know, do proper portioning and do all that stuff. And, you know, a lot of my team and a lot of friends around the you know, Ontario, you know, neighborhood, you know, we all work together and help each other out with little keys and 
little things like that to help each other out. What makes 155 the best weight class for you in the UFC? I feel like it's where all the best like meets are because 155 is where like almost every fighter could possibly fight at. Like you get like the all stars like you know you have Donald Cerrone, Justin Gaethje, Khabib, Connor, you know uh, Alvarez. Well, he's not with uh, UFC anymore, but you know like uh, and, uh, all those guys. It's just a division of sharks, and it's like you know you. you if you can persevere and, you know, get past these guys, you become, I think, one of those elites and one of the best fighters in the world. Because I feel like 155 and, like, a few other divisions are, like, the hardest divisions right now that are, I feel like, are more watched and more exciting just because of how athletic and how creative mixed martial arts has uh, become not only as, like, the sport itself, but as a unit, as all the people, how uh, all their styles are made. Going back uh, to your fight that, that's coming up, you know, Austin Hubbard, the guy, you know, he also is in kind of the same position you are at. You know, he went into his debut, you know, lost on the, the judges' scorecards. When you watched that fight, you know, his last fight, what did you get out of that? Um, To be honest, I haven't really watched his fight yet. I've had my teammates watch everything just because uh, I rather just focus uh, on adapting and growing and uh, getting better at my weaknesses and obviously increasing my strengths. With my team, like my coaches and everyone that's helped me around, like everyone at Maximum Training Center, Michigan Top Team, and like all the other gyms, uh, they tell me, like, this is what he does, you know, look out for these things. And then as the fight camp gets closer to the end, that's when we'll start watching, reviewing, and then we'll let everything go through the process on that part. How much time have you spent down at uh, Michigan Top Team for this camp? Um, usually I'll couple times a week if i can't just due to like work or i got something going on at mtc uh my training center um i'll try to go there at least once twice a week it's like right across the border right so they have more bodies a lot of elite guys there too and you know it's good to you know change it up and see what styles work with who and to adapt to those guys like darren Krukshank, jason fisher cody stamen you know all those who have been they've done that and you know they're still striving and still becoming an elite fighter so yeah i, I feel blessed to you know have everybody at maximum training center help me out and everyone at michigan top team you know everyone's everyone's a great help and everyone's a good friend there you know they're like brothers it's a brother family thing maximum training center you know uh that's your home now talk about the the guys that you're working closely with there to prepare yourself uh there's a lot of guys like uh well there's a few guys actually like uh my buddy uh shame on Ann. uh right now he's he dissects a lot of the stuff, but he's also one of my main training partners as well. He's a lighter guy, but he he's really good at analyzing, you know, figuring things out. And then I got uh, the Laramie brothers, uh, TJ Laramie, who's a 145er. And then, uh, you know, he's former TKO champ and very dominant champion. Uh, he has one of the best, I would say, world-class, like, takedowns and top control. And, you know, just because he's such a strong little bull. Like, other guys that are, like, my size, I have an easier time getting up with and i could defend him he's just a compact little ball of muscle and you know it's it's hard to keep him off and i know working with him feeling that kind of pressure and against like someone who's my size is way way different i feel have a way harder time with him and then you know he's a little athletic freak monster and he's hard working little beast all the angles and everything he does like he's literally world-class wrestler his hands and his kicks, everything comes at a different angle. It's you have to be sharp, or he will catch you. He may, you know, he can kick real high and hit you with some when he's looking down, come up, up or come over. Just he'll hit you with some nasty stuff. Uh, my teammate Joe Pettigoose, you know, from MTC as well. Uh, he's like our version of like Robbie Lawler, just go in and kill or be killed, you know. So <laughs> he's he's an animal. So they these all these guys will be yeah. Uh, a couple weeks after me actually. So we're all getting ready together. Yeah, it must be great to have a, a variety of guys, you know, not the same style, you know, because some gyms, it seems like the guys fight the same way, everybody. But it seems like you have a good variety of guys, different styles. Yeah, we got like a bunch of different guys, like we have our who will go to grappling and then we have our grapplers who will mix it up in their striking. And then, you know, we have, you know, our solid like jujitsu guys here. We'll work, we'll work wrestling one day and then just that same day just to you know work that top game work that wrestling get that conditioning and then go right to jits drills uh and then we'll get just get that and stay sharp and right like we all do uh, top level guys everywhere and then 
we don't got guys here. You know, we got guys that like to come see jujitsu, which is literally like a five, 10 minute drive from MTC. And then, you know, those high elite level guys there. So it's nasty animals everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any, you know, new additions to this camp that, you know, something that you did differently compared to every other camp that you've had? Um, probably better time management mm-hmm. with everything just to, uh, you know, get the proper sessions and the proper meals and, you know, uh, you know, whether this has this workload, put this in or work this hard for this session to do this. So like before, like this, I went for a run, but before the run, I put everything in, in our like kickboxing pad class and, you know, our drills and situational like sparring drills, put a hundred percent in, relax a little, go for a run, just to, you know, let the body go, get loose, do whatever. That's like the extra work. And then like tomorrow I'll have, you know, a little bit of uh, a pad sesh. Then I got wrestling and jits, you know, like the days will vary like that or they'll mix up and then everything will be portioned properly for, I feel how I'm feeling right now actually is in like peak performance and just keep leveling up each time. Have you gone down to the, the PI yet? Uh, no, I, uh, my coach actually asked me to go up with uh, a couple teammates because they're going up with uh, with Seaman actually the Laramies and all them and Jared Brooks and all that stuff Um, I don't know if I'm going to go there for this camp just because it is kind of cutting it close and just going from plane to plane and then then plane to plane I don't want to like mess up with my you know schedule and routine I want to feel good I know there'll be like good and bad days but I rather feel good the whole time even on a bad day and just push through it and I'd rather not you know, just, I don't want that jet lag. I don't want to have to, you know, look for certain food at a certain area and, you know, be a bother. I, I, where I'm at right now with adrenaline and Michigan top team and everyone around me, I feel uh, a lot more confident and, uh, you know, a lot more secure with how training and everything is going to be. So I, I think for this camp, I'll just stay around here, go to adrenaline, go to Michigan top team, go to Tecumseh, go wherever I got to go just to get like the job done. The Performance Institute, I can go, I'll, I'll try to go there after, obviously. <laughs> yeah, man, I guess, you know, the rhythm is so important, you know, you can't break that rhythm, you know, because it kind of gets you out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah, like, it's okay to be out of your comfort zones in certain situations, but I feel mm-hmm. like every moment is so precious and everything, you know, counts. So well, I'd rather just keep it be, and then when the time comes, that's when I'll go and do that, when I feel like the time is right. When you visualize this upcoming fight, you know, how do you see it playing out? Um, as the weeks go on, I see like obviously my I anyone. So wherever wherever if it stays on the feet the whole time, great. If we want to wrestle, you know, I am wrestling with all the guys at MTC, Michigan top team, and they're just grinders, they're nasty wrestlers. You know, and I can wrestle I can hold so I, I'm not afraid to wrestle. I just like to strike and bang, you know, like I wanna I I like to almost mimic like a crow cop Cerrone kind of style. You know, like if I go to the ground, you don't want to, you know, mess up at any point. Cause you know, when Cerrone's on the ground, he can tap you up from anything, whether he's on top or bottom, he's, he's crafty, he's cagey, he's nasty. You strike with Cerrone, you, you better catch him. Cause if you don't catch him, he's catching you. Right. So if I, I want to be like those guys, I want to, I want to be like that. All right. Well, one last thing before I let you go, uh, do you consider yourself a fighter or a martial artist? Um, I like to say both because there's certain points like you have to be a martial artist, but at the same time, you can still be that martial artist and athlete. But I feel like when the time comes and you have to persevere, you have to pretty much fight through it with your martial arts. So I feel like it's a good yin and yang kind of thing where you need, you need both, I feel. So I'd like to say I'm both like, I, I feel like I am a martial artist, but I also feel like I am a fighter, but I only keep it in like those perspectives. All right, man. September 14th, USP, UFC on ESPN plus 16, Vancouver, Canada. Thank you, Kyle, for the time and uh, good luck on your fight and your future. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my man. Thanks for having me.